I have here the Flipper Zero, arguably the most successful hacking device in existence right now. And so with the, the creators of the Flipper Zero, the Flipper devices moving into the new headquarters and hackerspace in London. Welcome to Flipper headquarters. Everybody is curious what is gonna be the next device. And lucky for us, the Flipper D creator, Pavel Rovner, have shared with us quite a lot of information about the next device called, expectedly, Flipper 1. According to Pavel, the Flipper 1 is not going to be a continuation of the Flipper 0 and it's not going to be just a tool. It's going to be a full-blown portable computer, more like a Raspberry Pi with a screen and a battery. It's kind of like the Cyberdex that a lot of DUI people like to make, but more polished and more thought out. The form factor of the new Flipper 1 is already finalized, and the mockups shown here are very close to be finished. They are still tweaking a few things in the outside of the device, and a lot of things in the internals, so stay tuned for that. We already know a bunch of things about the hardware. One thing we know for sure is that it will feature two processors. One is a co-processor that will run all the time in the background and do all the basic functionality of the device, such as earning background, updating battery status, and managing kind of the power bank functionality. The other processor is a powerful ARM system and a chip, which will run the actual OS. It will probably be the ROC chip ARM system with a chip and will be capable of doing six tops, which means it will actually be able to run basic AI on device itself. The Flipper team designed a custom screen, which will have the resolution of 256 by 144. And the reason for that specific resolution is because it enables the Flipper to have a multi-language on-screen keyboard. Now, the Flipper 1 will not have a touchscreen, just like the Flipper 0. Don't even back for it, right? They don't plan to do that. What it will feature is eight physical buttons, including four buttons that adjust to the actual application currently shown on screen. To me, it looks a little bit like the old car tape players, but you know, to each his own. Curiously enough, it will not feature any built-in radios. Instead of radios, it will feature an M2 slot where you can insert and swap different radio cards, including SDR for radio, LTE, Wi-Fi, and so on. It will also support display port over USB-C, which means that the flipper could display a full-blown GUI on an external display, kind of similar to what the game model does for the Flipper Zero. And like I mentioned before, the Flipper One will have a small power bank to power other devices. It will feature eight different buttons, including four buttons that change depending on the application that is currently running, and one button to switch between applications, a power button, and a full-blown D-pad with four directions and an OK button, and a joystick on the other side that will allow you to scroll and to go around logs and kind of move around the screen or the keyboard more easily. One of the things that surprised me the most is that the GPIO ports, like what you see here in the Flipper Zero, will not be exposed, but rather will be hidden behind inside the case itself. So if you want to extend the functionality of the Flipper One, you'll have to either make devices that are very small and fit in that small space, or you will have to 3D print a new door or maybe even a new case to expose the GPIO ports. Now, the biggest difference is in software. The Flipper 1, like I said, it's a full-blown Linux computer. So it will support multiple operating systems, including Android, Android TV, which I find very interesting, especially with the DisplayPort output, and uh, a customized version of Kali Linux. In case you don't know, Kali Linux is a special uh, distribution of Linux focused on ethical hacking and penetration testing, but Flipper are planning to make a custom distribution of Kali Linux, including all the regular functionality of the Kali Linux, but a custom designed UI on top. Essentially, the community and the Flipper team will be able to write special wrappers that are on top of existing Linux software, which will be usable from the UI. It will also support multitasking and you will be able to switch between running applications to that switching button. And it will work kind of like how smartwatches work today. A small screen, full-blown application, and when you tap the switch button, you'll have 
like a list of all the open applications. It also supports special background services, and so it can run background processes. And the Flipboard team is counting on the community to build a bunch of wrappers for applications such as Nmap, such as Metasploit, and all the other Linux applications that you could want to use on the go. And its UI will be running in a separate process that runs kind of directly on the device, but also can sync to the desktop and you will be able to see the UI of the Flipper on the desktop. The idea behind this UI process is that it will be similar to Tmux, essentially resizing itself to the size of the smallest screen it's connected. So if that's the Flipper Zero screen itself, you will see on your desktop the UI which will reflect what is running on the Flipper Zero. And since it's not an embedded OS, but rather a full-blown desktop operating system that can run on different hardware, the Flipper team is planning to open source or kind of open the, the OS and enable other devices to use that OS as well, essentially becoming like the, a new de facto OS for cyber decks, small gaming consoles and other devices, which I personally find very, very exciting. And interestingly enough, when connected to an external screen or external computer, the Flipper One will be able to run a full-blown Linux desktop on those devices as well. All right, so there you have it. This is uh, what we know so far about the Flipper One. It's very exciting. It's a very completely new vision for the device. And I love that the Flipper devices are being so open about the development process. Thanks so much with the community, with us, and with you guys. If you have some comments or thoughts, be sure to leave them in the description below or join our Discord and we can discuss it there. If you enjoyed that video, be sure to indicate to the YouTube algorithm that more people should see it by clicking like and subscribing to the channel as well. Okay, until next time, see ya!